So when you decided or when your life circumstance led to the welfare system, what were the procedures, protocols that they ask you to do before you enter it? Well, it's like uh, you're in possession of the system itself. Uh, you're dependent on the social uh, system, so uh, they screen you. Uh, you have to be open about everything, about your finances. Uh, but it also means that uh, they're in, in detail in your uh, personal situation. So, uh, and um, before being entitled to social welfare, uh, they have to judge whether you're entitled to it or not. So, you first get a screen. So what are the things they screen about you, about your life? Uh, even your bank accounts. Bank accounts and your private life, uh, relationships? Uh, yeah, relationships. Uh, and uh, it's not allowed to be uh, too often uh, if you have a partner with a partner. Otherwise you will be cut on your social welfare. Uh, I used to have my own law firm and I had a general practice. Uh, I did also social welfare cases. Uh, but in uh, some cases they even uh, come to your home and count the toothbrushes or uh, laundry uh, of your partner. So uh, that, that goes really deep into your private life. Okay, so what, when you are inside that system, what are the rules that you have to follow? Apart from, you have already mentioned the rules X and Y. What are the other rules that they expect you to follow? Uh, you have to uh, uh, do enough effort to find yourself a job and um, uh, there's a national um, uh, condition that you have to fill in a form every month uh, to declare and sign that you didn't have any extra income. And uh, you have to uh, also um, uh, tell about uh, uh, probable changes in your personal life. Like uh, whether you have uh, kids at home or uh, have a partner uh, and so forth. So suppose somebody wants to help you, is that accepted? Uh, no, uh, there are some really um, uh, sharp lines. Uh, I cannot, I, I could not, uh, meanwhile I have a job uh, since 2019, but when I was in social welfare, it's not allowed to accept any gifts, uh, uh, or you have to uh, ask permission for it. But if it's about money or uh, even groceries that are given to you, you have to, uh, inform them uh, about it and it's po possible that they cut your uh, welfare depending on uh, what you got. So it's very subjective. Uh, assessment. Yeah, yeah assessment. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's always a person who uh, judges whether uh, you're entitled to social welfare or not. So, so I mean, what, what I see, if you correct me if I'm understanding it right or wrong, what I see is that you are seen as an abstract human being who was supposed to be there, but you are still not there. So that is complying all the rules which means to have a work of your own and earn income. If you are not there, then they bring, in to bring you into this square, into this house of welfare. And quite contrary to what it would have meant or intended, they try to repair you. Repair you, repair you into complying person rather than see you as a, an individual, as a person and what you need. In a system like this, the more money you have, the more freedom you have. It's not about citizenship, it's about if you have more money, you have more freedom. If you have less money, least money, you have the least freedom. Just a comment that one third of the people have the right to be on bijstand, on welfare. They don't ask for it, according to a research of the Ministry of Social Affairs themselves. And that's quite shocking, huh, I think. Yeah. Okay, so, which, which, which also brings us to the other issue that possibly there are many people who are in need of welfare but may not want to get into the welfare system or accepting social welfare because of the, in, uh, the, the insults and the compromise of dignity that happens possibly. So uh, you, you're, you're happier to be out of that system completely. Uh, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of negative energy to uh, be a part of the controlling system. 
Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I'm a very stubborn person. So, yeah. uh, so uh, Patrick, tell us about the experiment that you were part of, which government itself initiated. Uh, yeah, the government uh, initiated the pilot uh, for what they called uh, basic income, and they had uh, three kinds of group. Uh, I was in the lucky group that they totally left me alone without any uh, checkups uh, or any conditions. So I had uh, my basis to uh, uh, research the possibilities of uh, uh, potential jobs. So it, uh, it really felt, uh, it was a total difference, it really felt free. Uh, and I also remember you saying, uh, Patrick, that um, what finally even the experiment was not a true basic income. Why? Uh, it was temporary. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was just an experiment. Yeah. It had a beginning and it had an end. Yeah, in a certain way, it was a total unconditional. Uh -huh. You know, uh, you knew it was a pilot. Okay, Patrick, anything else you want to share? About basic income? Well, yeah, I just remembered that uh, when I was a lawyer, uh, I had some conversations about social welfare uh, uh, with the government <laughs> officials. And uh, they told me it was meant to be unpleasant, to uh, give people the pressure to find uh, a job as soon as possible. So it's a, it's a welfare system for the exceptions, not a system which enables and facilitates uh, better human life a flourishing and a thriving human life, accepting differences, rather it punishes. So it's, if it is an explicit objective of the system to make it unpleasant for you so that you get out of it and become like everybody else, I think that the example of uh, metaphor of a hospital, that you are basically in a hospital and you have to get out of hospital. And if you don't have the desire to get out of the hospital, they will find ways of pushing you out of the hospital. Right? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. Yeah.